Okay, when I, when I create <clears throat> a wireframe, I like to go and, and use a variety of different programs. And one way you can do it is you can use Adobe Illustrator to do so. And the key with Adobe Illustrator is to set up your document the first way with grids. If you don't, then things are not going to you're not going to get things lined up. And you got to get line you got to get with the wireframe, you got to make sure things are lined up perfectly and spaced perfectly. So the first thing I do is I create a file new. And what I want to do is you can go to the web here and there's some view all presets. I usually tell students for this class do 960 by 560. Okay, uh, you can do something a little bit calm and larger if you wanted to, but I definitely think this would be all right to, to work with. You don't have to make any adjustments here. 560 pixels and the height is fine. Um, and then I'm just going to click on create. Now the thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to view and I'm going to turn on um, show my um, grid. And that's what I want to do is then I want to change my settings here. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to go back to view and I'm going to also snap to grid. If you want to line things up, you can utilize that. It's going to be actually pretty, um, pretty good for that purpose. Once you do this, you have to go into the preferences. Uh, if you're on a Mac, it's, it's in, uh, I believe it's under file or the AI. But you want to go to edit preferences and you want to choose uh, guides and grids. And what I want to do is I, I change. I want to change the grid line to every 80 pixels. That's going to create 12 columns. So if you're doing 960, a lot of times there's this what we call a layout called 960 grid. And so what we usually do is we divide it into 12 columns, and that's 12 80 pixels each. And then what I'll do here is I'm going to do four subdivisions, and I'm going to click OK. So as you can see here, you can see that you have these lines added um, to help you. So the next thing you're going to do is start working on your wireframe. Start working with your layout. Look what you sketch. Try to recreate what you have, um, and, and and so forth. So you know one of the things you know, to kind of get an idea here, um, since I have something uh, you know semi done, uh, layout wise, um, I can bring in an image in here um, of a layout, and then I can just create boxes over top of that if I wanted to. Um, but if you're creating from scratch, you don't have that aspect, then you're going to have to kind of look at your design and you know you have the guides in place. So the first thing I know is up here at the top, I'm going to have a header. And so again, depending on what you're going to work with, I'm going to just create my rectangle tool and I'm going to go all the way across. I'm going to have it snap to that edge. Now let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay. And then <clears throat> wireframes, we don't really need color, um, so I usually use grays uh, to indicate certain things. So I know I'm going to have color up here. Um, so what I typically will do here, um, depending on what you're, you're working with, I, I basically use a gray color. Okay. Um, and then that might be too dark, depending on what I want. And I usually don't put a border around this, so I make sure there's no stroke added. Okay, no stroke added. All you have to do is click on that and, and choose the red slash. Okay, and then what I do here is then I'm going to take my type tool and of course I can draw a box like this and see how it snaps. Now by default, you see how it's filled in with Laura Mibson text? Okay, um, now if I click, it just puts in Laura Mibson there. Um, so what I can do here is I'm going to move this up here. I'm going to make sure it lines up, and then I'm going to put in solid day designs. Okay, and then whenever you put your text in, yes, you got to showcase the right font size and everything on that part. So with that, with that regards, I'll go over my character panel, choose the right font. I'm just going to pick one out. And 12 points is definitely going to be too large. So 48 points. Move that in place. Um, most likely I want that to be a lighter color. Make it white. Okay. Now the beauty of this, of course you can add some effects in here if you wanted to. Uh, like for example, um, some people add a little drop shadow. Uh, going in. Um, I wouldn't distort it too much like tweaking this stuff because it, 
then you can't really create that muse. You have to create it in uh, Illustrator and then save it as a PNG and then bring it over. Okay. So, but there are some features here like stylized drop shadow. You know, I always like to go in and work with. Um, if I turn on the preview, you can see that there's a shadow behind there. But also, I, I think what you have to do is adjust the offset here. We'll do two and two and the blur I'll go down to two and see how that just stands out a little bit like that okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to then create my buttons for my navigation bar and how would I do that you know you, should, you can use the rectangle tools um, then what's the beauty of this is then if you use the guides here okay See, there's the one button. I'll I'll put it up here, okay. and then I'll use my Alt key, the Option key on the Mac, and I can duplicate this going across. Depending on how many buttons you have, and so then you can come back in here. We can add, if we want to, we can. Oops, we can add some type. Now it remembers the last font size you work with. That's that's the, the weird part with the Illustrator. So if I just click here, I'm going to type in home. Then you're going to ha definitely going to have to change this. I'll change it back to a regular font. Change it down. Change the color. Move that in place. And then you can also select the box that's behind it. Well, if I can get that box. And I can select the text. You can always go to your line panel and you can make sure it lines in the center if you wanted to. Now that moves everything up. So just once you have it both lined, just move it back down, you know, for that purpose. And then what you would do is then you can just take your option key again and duplicate this across. Um, again, you gotta line it up. Now what's happening is the snap on grid is coming on. So this is where a lot of people turn that snap to grid turn back off. Uh, because if you don't, then you can't get it centered like you, you want here. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to duplicate this, duplicate this, and then of course what you're going to do is you're going to go in and change the name of the, the, the pages. Okay. So again, uh, what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a wireframe. It gives me a skeleton look. Now, now I work on the main part, you know, unless I have a footer area down here. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to take my type tool and I'm going to have a subheading. So I'm going to click here, and again, I like it. You know, a lot of stuff is, is is you have to kind of think about what you're typing in. So you got to have to kind of give me that same look. Um, and so um, usually for subheadings, I'll actually put actual titles in that I'll be using. Okay, I'll change that font, make sure it's right. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up. And then I already have this paragraph of text. Remember, all I did was took my text tool and draw a box. Um, so what I want to do here is then this is where these guys come and play. So what I want to do is bring this up, and I'm going to make sure it fits within those grids. I'm going to have it line perfectly on that. And then what am I going to do over here? You know, I'm going to probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate a couple of these. Um, boxes. So I take my black arrow, I'm going to hold down my shift key and click on each. And then I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to hold down the option key um, on the Mac, Alt key. And then what I'm going to do is just when I drag it down or release, and I got a couple articles. And then what I'm going to do is change this to a different heading. Okay, then what I might might do is I want to maybe go in and put place a graphic over here on the right hand side, um, and 
you know something that will grab their attention um, a lot of times usually you, you have there's different ways of doing it but you could take the rectangle tool um, if you wanted to and what I'm going to do again is I, I want to make sure I get things lined up perfectly so I'm going to line it to the top of the paragraph here and I'm going to line go all the way over to the edge of the navigation bar see it's lining up perfectly now I don't want probably black here um, but you can leave it black if you wanted to uh, I'll just go to a grayish color so that indicates the picture now if you're going to add some caption right below it because a lot of times with a, what you want to do is you want to add a caption so I'm going to make sure it lines up perfectly the text box then you want to resize it to make sure it fits to what you need okay so here you might not do bold you might not do again it remembers the last thing you did so that is something that you have to watch out for okay so you, if you know with illustrator it remembers all the concept so I'm going to make it unbold and, and 12 points to make it a little bit smaller for that and so again what I'm doing is training a nice little layout I'm working with alignment I'm making sure things fit perfectly um, and, and so forth and that's where these guides and grids come in play so hopefully then what you can do then um, at the end definitely save this as your illustrator file so you can go back and edit it if you want um, and then what I would suggest to doing you know is then save a copy um, as a PDF and you can go down here to Adobe PDF give it a name um, and you know wireframe one and then save it and so forth now this will come in and say as a PDF and all that good stuff and then if you want to make another change you can say well you know what let's, tr let's change this up let's make this alternate because we always ask for alternate layouts so I'm going to move this out of the way and I'm going to say okay let's take tips and, and let's make our text up here and again I'm lining it up then I'm going to take this graphic and maybe I have it um, start over here and if I have a, a larg, larger landscape graphic, then maybe what I'll do is I'll fill it in like this. Um, if you have one, you know. And then what you have now is we're going to just make sure all the things are lined up perfectly. Um, but you, then you have a different layout. And so what we're trying to have you encourage here is just look at different alternate layouts and keep it simple. You know, experiment with the font so choices. So like up here, you know, again, you have to look at the font you're using. You got to look at the font size that we choose. Um, some of the headings that you might choose, you have to go and adjust the current and tracking. Um, so that's all set up there. Um, so look at your character panel and, and make those adjustments. And then what you'll do is you'll decide with, with what wireframes you have. You'll say, OK, let's create a mock up now. You know, let's put actual content in, you know, and let's put a graphic in. And we'll actually color, put more, we'll put color in uh, for that purpose.